The magical realms of Nightingale come with an abundance of resources, some unique to specific biomes, while others extremely rare or difficult to find. In my ultimate crafting guide, I already shared the importance of using the right resources to craft yourself the best weapons, tools and armor in the game, to maximize your damage output, increase survivability, etc. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is 4AM, and in today's Ultimate Resource Farming Guide, a project which I've been working on for days, I'm going to share all the essential resources from different tier essences to tier 1 to 3 wood, hide, fiber, and every important mineable resource to get your hands on the best ingots and items to be ready for the endgame, including etched and pursuit ingots, high quality fiber, and legendary hides. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get farming. A quick shout out to Inflection Games, the studio behind Nightingale, for sponsoring me to make this guide. This project took much longer than expected, but man, I am very much looking forward to sharing everything with you guys because this one has been in the making for dozens of hours. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out Nightingale with my link in the description down below. So let's get down to business. Very important guys, don't forget to check out my ultimate crafting guide if you want to be ready to farm for the best resources in the game. This one allows you to craft top tier weapons, tools and armor so you can advance into higher difficulty realms where you can find all these precious resources. Anyways, let's start off with the essentials. Tier Essence Dust, which you're gonna need to upgrade your gear, which will give you access to the higher level resources in the game. What I think is the best way to quickly get your hands on a ton of tier essence is to first complete the Fey Towers, which is a pretty big fortress that comes with different floors. Each floor has a challenge, which also gives you some essence as rewards. Especially the final floor comes with a wave of enemies, synchronous lotus and so much more bonus resources. After you've done that, you will basically unlock all the points of interest on the map. So it's going to be even easier to farm besties of agility or besties of intellect, occupation events to get your hands on even more of that tier resource. The higher the realm difficulty, the better the tier essence rewards will be as well. Level 10 Abeyance Realms come with standard essence as rewards, while for tier 1 essence you want to visit both the Antiquarian, Astralable and Provisional Realms. Once you've picked up all the different blueprints available in these realms, craft yourself some decent level gear and are ready for a higher difficulty, then it is time to move on to both Herbarium, Gloom and Hunt realms, as right here you can find tier 2 essence when hunting for creatures, mining ore, chopping down trees and gathering plants. I know that's already a lot of information, while with this little sheet it will become so much easier. So the Abeyance Realm will give you standard essence dust, while the Antiquarian, Astrolable and Provisioner Realms will come with tier 1 essence as reward. If these start to feel a little bit too easy though, it's definitely time to move on to the Herbarium, Gloom and Hunt Realms. Especially the final one comes with the highest chance of finding level 100 resources, but all three have tier 2 essence. Definitely be sure to build an upgrade bench in your base, as this is the easiest way to level up your gear score, get ready for higher difficulty realms, and of course, start farming those resources. If you want to increase the effects of all your items, you should also pick up a couple enchantments or infusions right here, which can increase your durability, range damage, maximum stamina, and so much more. Especially for a backpack, you want to have the infusion encumbrance and go for the highest tier as this will actually give you plus 10% maximum weight instead of the 5. As you can see, my character now comes with a maximum weight of almost 400 because of this tier 2 forest fiber backpack. Anyways, let's move on to the ores because there are so many different ones in Nightingale. It can become a little bit overwhelming, which I have categorized one by one. All the timestamps can be found in the description. But let's quickly check out my trunk right here with all the different ones you can get your hands on. So as you can see, we've got some brass ingots, etched ingots of shimmering. We've got magnesium, nickel, pursuit, one of my favorite ones right here, steel ingots and so much more. All these different ores you can pick up in the game with, of course, different types of gear score. So let's start off with tier 1 resources or gear score 10, for which I recommend you to check out the Abeyance or Antiquarian realms to find them a lot easier. 
First off, we have the Raw Gem Quartz, an essential resource you want to pick up as quick as possible, which is necessary for making gloss, needed for all sorts of different crafts, but this one can be found in all the different biomes, both the desert, the forest and swamp biomes. It's pretty easy to determine if a note is going to be quartz, as you will see these spiky white things sticking out of it. Next up, we have coal, slightly more difficult to find, but can also be picked up in all the different biomes according to my research. This one though, doesn't easily show itself outside. Instead, you want to start searching in cave systems, as this is where I had the highest chance of finding the resource. Then we have three essential resources exclusive to certain biomes. The first one is tin. This one can only be found outside in forest realms. I have the highest chance of finding these near mountain sites while they usually spawn in bundles where you can mine a ton of the resource. While for zinc you want to check out the swamps. This one comes with a dark blackish color while if you want to pick up nickel you want to check out the desert. This one looks a little bit like the silver notes. So that's basically where you want to pick up all the biome exclusive essentials for the early game. If you're wondering which ingot is going to be the best to craft gear with for your early day adventures, to get ready for the mid game basically, well, this sheet is going to help you with that. Zinc comes with a pretty decent amount of bonus melee damage, extra blocking and bonus durability. While Nickel comes with 4 bonuses, 10% melee damage, 10% strength, 5 durability and also a whopping 15% fire resistance. While Tin only comes with 5% crit and 10 durability. So I think for the early day crafts, Nickel really stands out right here. Anyways, let's move on to gear score 40 or tier 2 resources, which I recommend you to farm on provisional realms, as these come with a tier 1 essence to upgrade all the gear you craft and also doesn't have as dangerous enemies as the herbarium realm comes with. It's important to know that the resources we talked about earlier can also be found in these realms, but let's start off with raw gem amber, which most of the times I found inside cave systems just like the sulfur and coal. This also on all the different realms, both desert, forest and swamp realms, while sometimes it can take a little bit of time before you spot these. Then for the biome exclusives, we have copper, which can exclusively be found in desert realms. Also comes with this orange-ish texture, so it's pretty easy to tell if you found some. While the forest exclusive this time is the shimmering ore, which can be found a lot near rivers or cliff sides once again with this gray pinkish texture. And this time the swamp exclusive is iron ore, which is also pretty easy to find. It has this gray orange ish texture, while there is also salt or halite, which you can find, I think, exclusively on desert realms as well, which I find pretty surprising as this time desert comes with two exclusives compared to the other realms. It comes with a pretty similar texture to that of nickel. So if you only find that one, it means you have to slightly crank up your realm difficulty. This time though, we can talk about three more ingots, the etched ingots, brass ingots, and also steel ingots. Etched ingots are nothing too fancy. You basically want to throw in a certain ingot and convert it into etched, which will give it the exact same stats. While this one is required for certain crafts, other than that, it's really not interesting to talk about. While for brass ingots, you're going to have to pick up both the zinc ore and copper ore. Zinc from level 10, copper from level 40. And if you combine the ores, very important, not the bars, you will turn them into brass ingots, which already come with some pretty decent stats. Primarily required to craft base upgrades, but also comes with some decent magic power and resistances. Then we also have steel ingots, for which you're going to need both the iron ore and coal. Anyways, if you're curious which resource will be the best to farm for to basically get ready for higher difficulty realms, well, this sheet will give you an answer to all those questions. Iron is top tier for melee builds to deal more damage with that 15%. 10% strength and also a whopping 20% durability. While copper is amazing for rifles, 50% range damage, 50% magic and also 10 poison resistance. Shimmering though is going to be more interesting for pistols with that 20% range rating as pistol bullets lose a lot of damage on higher range. Brass, primarily interesting for crafts in your base, maybe some resistance. While with steel, you can make an amazing tank build with 25% strength, extra blocking efficiency and a whole lot more durability. 
To get ready for the end game though, you want to farm for gear score 100 resources, which are even better. First off, we have magnesium. I most commonly came across this resource inside cave systems, both in the desert, forest and swamp realms. So you can find it on pretty much every single one of them. It also comes with this silver-ish texture. The forest exclusive this time is the Pursuit Ore, which is one of my absolute favorite ones to pick up early as it comes with a whole lot of interesting bonuses for not only range damage, but also all sorts of other crafts. The desert exclusive this time is silver. This one is pretty easy to find as it comes with, of course, a silver texture. While then we also have cobalt. This one exclusive to the swamp looks pretty similar to silver, so it can be easy to get confused. While most of the times I actually found this one inside cave systems. Guys, let us know in the comments down below if you also managed to find a certain resource on a different location. Always helpful for the community. Anyways, in all three cave systems on higher levels, you can also come across different types of raw gems, rubies, sapphire, and diamonds. Some of them are gonna require a gear score of level 200 or higher though. I'm definitely gonna talk more about all these in a future endgame resource farming guide. Anyways, now you're probably wondering which of these ores is going to be the most interesting to farm for to get ready for the end game. Well, silver ingots come with 10% critical strike rating as well as 20% magic. So amazing for spell builds while pursuit comes with this whopping 25% range damage, 7.5 critical and bonus durability, which is my absolute favorite one to pick up if you want to craft guns with insane amounts of damage, especially if combined with a certain type of wood which we're going to cover in a second, but also magnesium, 50% range damage, 20% ranged rating, bonus stamina, amazing for pistols, and then we also have cobalt with bonus magic, rain resist, ice resist, and durability, which isn't that great. Next up, we have both fibers and wood. These can actually be harvested very easily as they most of the time spawn very close to each other in these little circles in the world. In deserts, they will look like oasises with trees of all different types of colors. While inside forests and swamps, these trees can also be spotted from pretty far away. And at the forest or swamp floor, you will most likely find rare fibers as well. So on your farming runs, it's very important that you have both the sickles and a lumberjack axe with you, as these are going to make the farming runs a lot more efficient, as then you can pick up both resources at the same time. Anyways, let's first check out the fibers. So in all three different biomes, you can find unique types of fiber. The desert fiber, the forest fiber, and swamp fiber. Instead of covering these separately one by one like I did with the ore, let's pull out the sheet with all different tiers so you can see their stat bonuses and which one is going to be the best for your crafts. So desert usually comes with stamina, magic power and also heat resistance, while the forest tiers will come with bonus HP and primarily rain resist at higher tiers though, also increased weight and stealth bonus. The swamp fiber comes with a hybrid bonus to HP and stamina, increased durability at higher levels and also poison resistance. The best fibers to prepare yourself for the end game, in my opinion, are forest fiber for sneak builds, while with swamp fiber you're gonna have increased survivability and desert fiber will be amazing for utility or hybrid builds. After you've farmed the fiber, you will most likely also have a ton of wood because it can be found at the same spot like talked about before. Very much recommended to farm this on Antiquarian Realms for wood of tier one with gear score 10. Tier 2 Provisioner Realms and Herbarium Realms on gear score 40, while if you have gear score 100, you want to farm for the tier 3 in Gloom and Hunt Realms. Just like with the fiber, the higher the tier, the better the wood. Desert wood is amazing to increase your critical strike chance, get more stamina efficiency, range rating and increased movement speed. While forest wood is better for strength, blocking, increased fuel duration and also more durability. While swamp comes with increased ranged damage, more magical damage, increased stealth rating and also some fuel duration on higher levels. In my opinion, the best resources to pick up would be forest and desert wood for melee damage, depending on your playstyle, swamp wood for increased range damage, and also the swamp wood for increased magical damage. I think the swamp wood is the best if we look at all the bonuses combined. 
Wow, that was already a lot of information. Anyways, last but not least, we also have hides or belts, which are very important for armor crafts specifically, as these also come with a whole lot of bonuses. It's pretty difficult to go over all the different creatures, all the different types of chitin, heights and pelts which you can come across in Nightingale, but I basically made a list of all the best creatures you want to hunt right before the end game, which all drop tier 2 stuff Fabled. Fabled is a rarer resource which also comes with more bonuses, especially on Hunt Realms, which are the last one you want to focus on to farm for the end game, is where you will find a whole lot of legendary creatures. If we open up the map in these specific realms, you can see this wolf icon. And specifically in Hunt Realms, you will not have one, but two, sometimes even three popping up in the same realm. This also means that there are two or three different creatures, exclusive ones, which you can keep farming 24 seven, as every time when you take it down, a new one will pop up with, of course, also that rare type of resource. This is only one of the many parts on which I spent a lot of time, many hours to prepare this guide basically with all the sheets. So again, it would be very much appreciated if you could spare one second of your time, hit that like button and also share your research in the comment section. Anyways, this is what I found so far. One of my favorites is the Atlas Deer, which can be found in the forest with 5% stam, 15 stamina regen, 15 magical damage, and also 15% movement speed. I think this is one of the best ones to focus on. While the forest kangaroo right here comes with a whole lot of stamina, stamina efficiency, and different resistances. Then we also have the Hex and Mongrel, the Desert Wolf basically, comes with a nice balance of HP, stamina regen and movement as well. The Leporidon or Swamp Kangaroo comes with a nice amount of stamina and blight resistance, while I think if you want to focus on melee builds and become pretty tanky, the Wild Bear of the Forest is amazing to farm, and this one comes with a lot of HP and strength. The Selkit Scorpion though, a lot of durability, stealth rating and stamina, so a amazing for sneaky builds, while for both stamina and stamina regeneration. You want to focus on the Leporidum from the swamp or the Widowed Spider. Really depends on if you want to have either blight or poison resistance. So yeah, I don't think I have to tell you that if you want to farm for all the resources altogether, both having amazing ingots, fibers, wood, as well as the pelts to basically make the best gear ahead of the very end game of Nightingale, you want to check out the Hunt Realms as these come with the best rewards and of course also the highest chance of finding top tier resources. So yeah, there you have it, all the essential resources you can pick up early, mid and late game to prepare for the very end game of Nightingale with gear score up to 100. If you find this guide helpful, it would be amazing if you could spare one second of your time, hit that like button, you have no idea how much time went into making this guide. Share your findings in the comments down below to help the community to make all the resource farming even easier. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel as a lot more Nightingale is coming your way. I'd love to read your Nightingale questions or video suggestions in the comments down below. And of course, you're very welcome on our Discord. Right now though, it's 4am out. I want to wish you an amazing day. I'll check you in the next video or live stream. Take care. Peace.